Guys, in this video, we will be talking about the bone tumor. Everything that you need to know, it is a very important topic and high yield topic, both from NEET PG, IIT, FMJ point of view. So, I'll try to integrate the path, ortho, and the radio part of the bone tumor. So, starting with bone tumor. So see how the bone tumors are classified. So basically, if the if it could be either fr from the bone, from the cartilage, from the fibrous tissue, maybe from giant cell tumor, maybe from vascular causes, or maybe from other connective tissue or other disorder. So see, if we talk about the benign bone forming, it is osteoma, osteoid osteoma, and osteoblastoma. If we talk about the malignant sarcoma, name only indicates it's malignant. Now again, see cartilage forming in the name, it comes sarcoma, it means it's malignant. If it comes oma, con osteochondroma, chondroblastoma, chondroma, it means it's benign. Now coming to the fibrous tissue in benign, again the name fibroma. And here in malignant fibrosarcoma. And if you see, we have the Ewing sarcoma, which is a malignant tumor. Okay. Now seeing the important thing, we'll go on to device. First of all, we'll see what is epiphysis, diaphysis and metaphysis. At the ends of the long bone, we have the epiphysis. Okay. Below the epiphysis. Okay. And just above the epiphysis, you have the metaphysis. Okay. And between, in the between, you have the diaphysis. Okay. So like this is important because if you have an x-ray, if you know where the site of tumor is there, you can localize your differential diagnosis, narrow down it. So see, if we talks about the talk about the epiphysis okay remember ecg means epiphyseal tumor is chondroblastoma and giant cell tumor okay if we talk about the diaphysis remember dear o okay see d is for diaphysis okay e is for ewing sarcoma a is for adamantinoma okay and uh, and uh, r is r is for like <laughs> R is for round cell tumor, okay, and O is for osteoid osteoma. So now remaining all thing comes under metaphysis. So no need to remember if you remember this, okay. Now coming on to the characteristic location of the tumor, okay. See, I told about epiphysis, ECG. See, it comes here, chondroblastoma and giant cell tumor are epiphysial tumor. See, now the location, adamantinoma. Where was it? You remember it was in DRO means this is the uh, diaphyseal tumor and the location is tibia so remember it okay chordoma this is seen the location is classic location is the sacrum now coming to the osteoblastoma osteoblastoma has a special property it is seen in spine and this tumor does not repaint does not decrease by intake of NSAIDs so this is important okay and chondrosarcoma the classic um, the classical location is in the pelvis now coming on see this page will summarize entire everything you need to know about the bone tumor okay first of all we are starting with giant cell tumor see giant cell tumor ECG means it is a epiphyseal if you buy shell tumor okay presentation 20 to 40 years of age and x-ray if you see this you can see this looks like a soap bubble appearance means on a radiograph it appears soap bubble okay giant cell tumor what does it indicate it will show giant cell on histopath but uh, there is a catch here the giant cell tumor are not the malignant part but the spindle cells they are actually the tumor cells okay now coming on to the other other epiphyseal tumor that was your chondroblastoma okay so chondroblastoma is also known as cordman tumor but remember cordman tumor and cordman triangle are not the same i'll be talking about the cordman triangle further chondroblastoma arises from the epiphysis okay and here there is calcification known as the chicken wire appearance chicken wire calcification seen in chondroblastoma okay coffee bean nuclei are seen in chondroblastoma and also in histopath humus is giant cell so chondro c for chondroblastoma c for cordman tumor c for coffee bean nuclei c for chicken wire appearance okay now coming on to the diaphyseal tumor like Ewing sarcoma and osteoid osteoma okay so this osteoid osteoma this affects the diaphysis of the long bone common in less than 20 25 year of age okay and see uh, the uh, there is pain in the night which decreases by the intake of aspirin but if you have a osteoblastoma pain does not decrease by the intake of NSAIDs or aspirin and here osteoid osteoma what will it show it will show radiolescent nidus nidus means bovine bone which is surrounded by sclerosis all around it okay now coming on to the Ewing sarcoma so like the most famous thing that you need to know it is 
uh, it is found in diaphysis first of all then the second most important one on radiology you find the onion screening appearance so this is very important and on histopath it shows it is a small round blue cell tumor and it shows homer right pseudo rosette okay and what more do you need to remember see uh, you need to know the translocation okay so a wing sarcoma you can remember wings helps you to fly okay hence what is the gene mutation ews fli1 okay and a wing sarcoma e for remember 11 and the double of 11 is 22 so it is associated with translocation 11 22 okay and this is responsive to chemotherapy Okay, now coming on to the remaining tumors that are left. Okay, so we have osteosarcoma, means it is a malignant tumor. Okay, so what this is the second most common malignant tumor. The risk factor is Paget's disease, okay, familial retinoblastoma, and it is located in the metaphysis. Since it does not come on in our mnemonic, what does it do? It leaves the periosteum, okay. Hence, it forms the Codman triangle. But with what was the Codman tumor? That was chondroblastoma and histopath. What you will see? You will see malignant osteoblastic cell, which is surrounded by osteoid, which appears thin, lazy, and eosinophilic. And it gives a sunburst appearance classically. Now, coming on to the other remaining tumors like osteochondroma. Osteochondroma is the most common benign tumor. Okay, arises from the metaphysis again. And osteochondroma is also known as exostosis. Hence, what is the gene mutation problem? EXT1 and EXT2. And radiograph will show bony exostosis. See, you can see this is a cartil extra cartilaginous growth. And you can see there is a cartilage cap all around it. Hence, this was osteochondroma for you. Now, coming on to the enchondroma. Okay, enchondroma is a benign tumor, but if it becomes malignant, that is chondrosarcoma. Okay, this is the most common tumor involving the small, small bones. So, this is important. It arises mostly from the metaphysis and may extend till the epiphysis. Okay, and there are two syndromes that you need to know. One is the Olias disease. And one is the Mafuchi syndrome. So what does Olias syndrome? If there is multiple inchondroma that is non-familial, it is known as Olias syndrome. And Mafuchi syndrome, familial multiple enchondroma with cavernous hemangioma plus glioma plus ovarian tumor. So this was all you need to know about the bone tumor. Hope this helps you guys in your revision. Do share, comment, subscribe.